Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hello. We've just turned on the recording. This is the January 29, 2021 regular meeting of the ROS2 tooling working group. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll see a couple other folks today, but it might just be a small meeting. Uh, that is OK with me. I did see someone uh, put some requests on. Oh, OK, Christoph. So we'll probably <clears throat> expect him today. Put a request for feedback on ROS2 tracing post eight minutes ago. Nice. Okay. In the meantime, I'm just going to quickly look through the stuff. Um, action items from last time, I don't think we had any. Uh, if I look at the past regular meeting, actually, there was um, the streaming interface to review, uh, which we have started going back and forth on that. Um, it looks like, PJ, you've updated that. So I'm not sure why the tests are failing again. I've been working very hard to make yeah. sure that these are passing. Um, yeah, I cleaned up the unrelated changes, although I hadn't uh, looked at the test failures there yet. OK. Um, anyways, this one's making progress, and I feel good about it. We can get back to it at the end of the meeting if we have time. Um, or sorry, by end of the meeting, I mean get reviewed action items. Um, actually started looking at that one. I feel like once the review gets started, it's easy to keep it going, but gaining context in the first place is the hard part. I don't think we have any open community PRs because I didn't open any, and I don't know if anyone else ever has. <laughs> so that's um, up to date. The GitHub scripts repo has been created, but I have not yet put the tools in there. I really think that I should because there's a lot of value to be gained from that, at least by a few other people. Uh, I just need to make sure it's cleaned up a bit anyways. So that's good from last time. Uh, and then I think that I would like to look at the backlog as the last thing to make sure that we have time for anyone's discussions. Um, so Matt, PJ, is there anything you guys wanted to talk about today before I jump into anything else? Uh, I just want to ask how the uh, breakout session go last week. I couldn't make it because I was out doing robot testing in the field. so. Oh, I'm jealous of that. I haven't gotten to touch a real robot in a long time. Not not in this job. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, it went well. I think that we made a lot of progress in figuring out how we want to structure that code for re-indexing mm -hmm. um, and identified sort of two major PRs that that one should be broken into, one for the sort of core mm -hmm. C++ functionality and the other one for the you know binding to the command line level. Uh, so having identified those, I think it helped us uh, nitpick the, not nitpick, but you know, structure each half of it more correctly because we could focus on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't think that either of those follow-up PRs have been opened yet. I was kind of hoping that, um, uh, what's his name? Jacob uh, was going to be here so we could check in on the progress. Uh, who knows? Maybe he'll drop in. Yeah, but I could ping him about it. Oh, yeah. I forgot you guys worked together. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I am curious to see how that's going. Uh, you know, I, I don't have a, a due date on that or anything, but um, definitely want to make sure that he's not blocked by anything. So, okay, let me, yeah, right yeah. Um, other than that, I owe you some answers to the questions and comments you posted on the um, multi machine launching thing. I'll try to do that sometime today, I think. Oh yeah. Again, no, no, no due date for my side. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to um, provide value by giving you some some feedback and stuff. Um, cool. And then. Yeah. So as for me, I, uh, uh, I, if you recall the issue of Rossback two not building when you had binary Ross rolling packages installed. I do. Uh, yeah, I let that sit for a little bit too long, and the issue can't be reproduced anymore because now there isn't any uh, API breakage between the binary release and the master branch. 
Uh, oh. So that's a little, yeah. Uh, so that's a little bit annoying. You know, we can go ahead and merge in the PRs that cleaned up some of that stuff, but uh, the issue is technically still there, and we'll probably see it again if anybody makes a API breaking change that would cause Rossbag 2 Pi to fail to build. So is this API breaking or ABI problem? Um, uh, let me think. Uh, and so I, I think that this was uh, a API change in the Rossbag 2 storage Okay, so the uh, compiler, happened. like the compiler is failing. It's not a runtime problem or anything. Yeah, like so it caused a compilation failure uh, because Rossbag 2 Pi was trying to use the headers from the binary installed version of Rossbag 2 storage uh, instead of the headers in the workspace. Are you able to reproduce that problem uh, by having Rossbag 2 in an overlay workspace? Uh, so you create one, you know, Ross 2 workspace with the whole core, which is what I normally do, and then um, you create another workspace with just Rossbag mm -hmm. in it, um, and then you know make an API breaking change in the, you know, the core workspace, uh, and then try to build your your overlay workspace. That might be an uh... easy way to reproduce the issue. Yeah, that's a good idea, and I hadn't tried that. I had only been doing it by uh, starting up a Docker container that had Ross Rolling installed in there and then mm -hmm. trying to build it in there. Yeah, I think I've run into problems like that in my workspace because I actually do that for development. Like, I, I have a, a you know, Ross 2 repos workspace, um, and then I overlay just Ross Bag 2 as a separate workspace so that I can run Colcon mm -hmm. build without any package selection arguments, you know? Um, I find it slightly more convenient, but I think I have been having some problems where I'm linking against binaries from the the parent workspace or something like that. Uh, so, so I think that might be able to reproduce your problem. Okay, uh, it's worth. Yeah, trying. that's a good idea. It'll probably take me a little bit of time to get that set up, but I will try to do that to reproduce it. Yeah, I mean, you really just need to two checkouts of Rossbag, right, and then um, mm -hmm. make sure to source the the one workspace before you build the other. Cool. Okay. Hopefully that helps you make progress on that. I, I, I think that you're right that the problem, even though it's not showing itself right now, still exists and we're going to run into it in the future if we don't fix it now. So I definitely appreciate any effort you put mm -hmm. on that. Yeah, thanks. Um, cool. And I had a couple of things I wanted to talk about high level on Rossbag, but I might be, um, I might consider making those into a breakout session because it's, well, one thing I want to talk about is, do we want to ensure that, because I have two back part PRs open that I could use a, a review on, um, and I want to find out if we um, are guaranteeing ABI compatibility, because I'm not sure that they maintain that. Um, we don't currently have it enabled on the Rossbag 2 you know, PR builder. And we haven't done a quality declaration, so we definitely haven't publicly promised anywhere that um, that we're going to keep ABI compatibility. But I wonder if we're giving it the effort. Um, trying to figure that out, Karsten, Maybe you have an opinion. <laughs> yeah, um, I just trying to the right moment, I guess. Um, I was wondering actually because it was Adam, I thought Adam would show up this day, so um, for that. that Issue came actually up on on last Monday's discussion with Adam. Um, how do we bring the the performance improvement back into proxy? Because like especially also for Apex and like the auto way auto relation, um, so it's kind of important to have the the performance you know, somewhat accessible within proxy. Um, we were thinking once that we might get along with just compiling. But then there's some dependencies um, in RC utils and RC PP utils which have, which have changed, um, so you can't just easily overlay and, and compile the Rossback master repos on top of a proxy based installation. Um, now then the discussion came up so like, hey, how do we how do we change the the PRs which went into performance reviews? Um, as such that we can backport them to Foxy. And now I'm just thinking out loud. Um, if you have tremendous, you know, like, tremendous changes on the compression, and we have 
significant changes for speed and performance, I was wondering if we could just pass forward master on top of it. Um, I, I'm not opposed in theory. I, I also wonder, you know, especially because we haven't made any API promises about Rossbag 2. Technically, we're quality level six or whatever right now because we haven't declared it. Um, and, you know, as long as we make sure to keep you know, what the Rossbag 2 transport pi API unbroken. Uh, you know, we could even add new things, but as long as we don't break that API, I think we could be okay to just backport all a master. Right. And um, I mean, in this case, it's not really a, a backport. It's more like a fast forward kind of thing, right? Because I need to, like, I take the complete chunk, everything which is a diff from proxy to master up today. And I, and I push it onto Foxy, and maybe you have to fix. We'll have to fix some things. Uh, that's that's the thing is is it'll have to be a fast forward and a right. fix. Kind but like maybe that fix is a is a PR directly on top of the rest of that. It's just a one one time like make this Foxy right. compatible. Um, right, 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 exactly. That um, does make sense, and that'll actually make some people I work with happy because they're like, "This is great that you're doing all this development, but we have customers who want to use Foxy." I'm like, "Okay, well." Right, right, right. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure if you if you would talk to the rest of the ROS2 team, they would give you the, let's say the the sensible answer of saying like, "Hey, that's what we have different versions for, and that's what we have different releases, and rolling release should be or up to date." Um, so the, the middle I don't ground. Know, in practice, that's not how it really works, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you said that. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I, I second it in a way. However, though, I would love to see or get at least a little a sense of, of community feedback here. And so what I was thinking with Adam last week is like, we should make this a discourse post and at least give it a week or two of announcements saying like, hey, please, community. Tell us how you currently use Roth bags. If we, you know, break your production system because you link against was Roth bag to CPP API and, and whatnot. Um, I mean, you know, it's not just like a, it isn't like the, the real gentleman move if we just go ahead and, and fast forward everything onto proxy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. We could also try to, I mean, something I've been thinking about with uh, with this is is one of the the items I have on the agenda for today, or maybe for a breakout session, is to talk about what the Rossbag two public API should be, because um, mm. I think right now because we have these packages, uh, it, there's a bunch of packages we install a lot of headers. And all of a sudden, all of this implement, what I consider implementation detail becomes part of the public API. And we have a really large surface area that we can't break when we're making changes. And I'm wondering if we should take can, can a- Can you give an example for this? Uh, I feel like the sequential compression reader, like that's an implementation detail and any changes to its API should probably not um, be you know, breaking to a distro. I don't know. I'm, I was wondering if we should just take, you know, a, a, a very close, careful pass at um, at the entire like header installed headers and try to reduce that set for Galactic right. so that we, you know, can feel better about backporting changes. Mm. Even though, even though I feel like the implementation or like a, let's say the architecture we have for the readers and the writers are at least somewhat ABI compatible. Because like we have this final reader and writer class, which takes a pointer to a implementation, right? Mm -hmm. So at least in that sense, we're somewhat ABI compatible. Yeah. Uh, there's just some stuff here that I'm, I'm not sure needs to be in public. Uh, so I am I guess I'm looking at compression specifically, which I'm restructuring. Right. So maybe I should look at um, something else like yeah, storage. Yeah. Um, yeah, and even then, like there's just a lot of types, I guess. But like metadata IO, maybe that does need to be public so that you can overwrite it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to, yeah. to go through this. Um, I, I overall like I, I'm with you that the compression 
and I think that's what you're currently working on. To yeah. Make the compression is just like yet another plugin which you can put into a reader or like yeah. a module you, you plug into a reader. So I think that's fine. Um, I do believe though that the overall architecture of Rosbag is kind of sensible in the way that we have storage, which is pretty independent of, of everything. So like, you know, that's also our use case at Bosch where we have like, you know, where we can use different storage backends the way we want it. Um, yeah. And maybe even do the opposite, use the use the storage backends independently of ROS or whatnot. Right? Um, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, so I'm like looking at it a little more closely and I think really compression was one of the major problems and I'm working on restructuring that now. So hopefully by Galactic, that'll be better. And yeah, if you change the inside of, you know, ROS, but like the reader so that it does multi-threading, that's still API and ABI compatible because you're only changing the implementation under the hood. Uh, yeah. So theoretically, all those um, performance improvements are not a problem to backport. It's just that the codes diverged a lot since then. Right. right. Um, yeah, and the plugins, you know, you change a plugin, whatever, it doesn't matter as long as the, the interface stays the same. And I think that we've defined that interface pretty well. We might be, I know there's some conversations happening right now about uh, updating the storage interface to allow for more types of seeking and reading and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. but, but again, that's new APIs. It doesn't necessarily break an ABI, but also maybe you don't backport those features. That, yeah, that's where I would draw the line. Most likely, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really backport these features. Um, but I feel like the performance improvements are so significant, and maybe yeah. also the changes for the for the compression. Um, but I feel like they should be backported. Okay. Yeah, I think I mean those the changes for the compression will allow people to provide alternate compression implementations, which to me is a really big gain. Mm -hmm. um, I mean. Maybe not. I don't know if this feature has been used very much because there was a bug that I think made it unusable that has been sitting in Foxy and we haven't gotten any bug reports. So, oh, yeah, one. I mean, that's for me. That's just one more argument to actually make this a a public a public affair in the sense of giving giving discourse two weeks to react to it. Um, yeah, um, let's do that. Uh, that's fine. Do you want to make that discussion? Should I? Um. I can I can take care of it. Okay. Uh, most likely, I would just send you a draft via email, and then you can good give me. your thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah, because I have a variety of, of mostly bug fixes <laughs> that I've been putting in, so uh, I think that there there would be high value to just getting everything back to Foxy. Um, I know that. From my side internally, people will be happy to hear that. Um, I know that OSRF probably will think that it's not the, the proper way to go, but right. um, luckily we, we seem to have been given a little bit of autonomy over how we manage this project. So as long as we don't break anyone too bad, I think we're okay. Uh, cool. Let's start that conversation and then we can move on. Um, so that means that my backports, I should probably just leave them for now or even close it and reopen um, later. So I'm going to say. Um, I mean, that's all to say. I haven't, I haven't really done my, my homework yet. So I haven't really checked in how many external dependencies we have which which have changed yeah um, i mean that's an experiment i could try today is to just um check out master against a foxy installation and, and build it and see how many changes it requires correct yeah um, I, I don't think that'll take very long uh, mm -hmm. so um yeah i'm gonna just say uh, try it out see how Okay, uh, for now until the decision is made on above. Okay, so that's, um, yeah, deferring decision making on that. Why, why is strike through not one of the normal things here? Oh well. Um, public API, we talked about that a little bit. Repository structure, that was something I wanted to. Um, also think about was at some point, do you think we want to separate the default plugins from the core Rosbeck 2 
libraries and have an evaluation process for the default? Or do you think that these initial defaults we've chosen will be the defaults forever? Um, I, I don't have a good answer for this. Um, yeah. I'm That's actually OK, because you know, like, we somewhat got inspired by the, the architecture of Avis, um, in which Avis has like some default plugins. And mm -hmm. That folder structure has multiple, multiple actual code bases in there. Now, uh, multiple oh, plugins. actual separate multiple packages. Plugins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the you know the robot monitor and robot state, uh, robot model. Yeah, whatnot. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah right. Um, and then similarly, we thought, OK, it might be a thing in ROS back too, that we had multiple plugins which we could you know, support by default. But I'm, I'm fine if we put in, if we get rid of that one higher level and just have like SQLite 3 as a, as a prominent first level uh, plugin, that's, that's fine. It doesn't yeah. matter. OK. I was, because I had been thinking something like, um, in the Rospec 2 meta package, um, package XML that we could, you know, have a, a sort of comment separated uh, section of default plugins, something like default plugins, uh, and you know, include specifically like Rospec 2 storage SQL3, Rospec 2 converters, CDR, mm -hmm. and to compression, CSTD, something like that. And the way I was thinking about going with this was that you would have um, exec depend prospect to core or something like this, and it would have uh, no, no plugins installed. And that way, if someone wanted to mix and match plugins, they could have a single meta package that they could install. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, as, because right now, if you wanted to install, say, level DB, but you didn't want, um, and you didn't want SQLite 3 to get installed, you would have to pick and choose every single one of these um, infrastructure packages. Oh, I see what you mean. Independently, so it's thinking like one one package that that defines the interfaces, and then one package, or and then the rest of it would be yeah, choosing well, the defaults. Yeah, what? Well, so I, I see your point, but. I I feel like at the same point you also have this um, you have this on, on ROS desktop as well, right? I mean, if you wanna if you wanna install if you wanna install whatever ROS proxy with a different default MW installation, you have to do basically the same thing. Right? Yeah, but I think if you're installing desktop, you've sort of given up yeah. your the, you, you caring about exact installation size. I'm, I'm thinking more about the device user, and so they do install Rosbeck two core. Uh, yeah. And then install a few extra things on top, which is um, sorry, yeah, ROS2 core, and then um, you know, and then install Rosbag plus uh, storage yeah. implementation, and and they don't want you know Arvis living on their um, yeah. Raspberry Pi or their TX2 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm 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 open to discussion. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up to. Um, to talk about because it's something I was thinking about as I was because um, I'm moving the the ZSTD compression out into a separate package rather than mm -hmm. living in compression. Um, my first step, I have a PR open right now that makes it into a plugin in the same package. I'm just doing staged um, incremental progress so that the PRs aren't quite so large. Um, Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So as long as I'm not hearing any big opposition to that. Um, um, Okay, um, that's that. And then, yeah, in terms of repository structure, I don't feel like we have to pull those out right now. It's just something I want to have in mind. Um, because I was thinking it might be nice to get sort of you know SQLite 3 vendor and ZSTD vendor packages out of the Rospec 2 core repository. It's not that big of a deal because you can selectively build when you check out source. Um, just something I had in, in, on my mind. I'm not going to make any immediate action on that. 
Okay, um, Christoph, I see that you are here and you wanted to talk about ROS2 tracing. Yeah, just, it's just going to be quick. Um, I just posted something on Discourse and I'm basically looking for feedback and challenges and use cases regarding uh, both ROS2 tracing itself and just the uh, challenges regarding uh, performance and uh, visualization. So I, I just encourage people to look at it or the okay. few people here. Yeah, thanks for bringing it up. I mean, I think we get a couple of watches on their recordings too. So, so maybe a, a few more people. Uh, yeah. cool. I, I haven't spent much time looking at ROS2 tracing, so I'm not familiar with everything that it provides. Um, but was there a, a sort of evaluation process that considered uh, other tooling like, like open tracing um, is one that comes to mind? You mean as a tracing tool or as a analysis? Yeah, as the underlying tracing implementation. I assume that you'd still need a ROS um, tying layer. Uh, yeah. I mean, the way we built it is to be able to support any tracing backend. Oh, so, I see. And we just started with LTTNG because that's what I knew and that's what uh, people working on it knew. So, okay. Yeah, but we could, the way it's built, we could technically support multiple tracing backends. Okay, great. Yeah, that's um, good to hear. I feel like a lot of ROS2 has been built that way, which makes me happy is that you can, um, most of these APIs are built so you can just plug stuff in. Um, mm -hmm. Big improvement. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I will be happy to take a look through this. Um, as well. I've heard some interest from some peers of mine who work on robots that distributed tracing and visualization tools would be really beneficial to their workflows. Yeah. Um, one, one case that comes to mind is a team who's working on a robot whose perception pipeline currently takes one, I think it's one to two seconds between the image coming off the camera and uh, an obstacle object coming out of their um, analysis. <laughs> and uh, that's partly because of large messages being passed around. So it seems like tracing would help them identify those bottlenecks really quickly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because we have st stuff like performance tests, but it doesn't it doesn't really tell you why it's happening and why the latency yep. is too big. Yeah. OK, is there anything really specific you want us to look at or just uh, take a look through here and call for feedback? I mean, just just read the post, and if you're interested in this, just maybe take a look at across to tracing uh, the package and stuff. Right. Great. That's that's pretty much it. Um, is it released into Foxy and Rolling? Uh, yeah. Okay. But cool. the thing is, if the tools are are available, but if you want to use the instrumentation, then you have to recompile RCL and RCL CPP. But we are, I think, there's interest in uh, having LTTNG as a dependency and shipping with with trust to like the code packages. But it's a work in progress. So the macros, the macros are, are compiled to to no ops. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, um, so there, there are trace, tracing macros in RCL and RCL CPP, you said? Correct. Does this, yeah, um, they, yeah. help, help, does this help you with, oh, it does have Python. So the RCL Py client is handled as well? No, currently it's, so whenever we can instrument RCL, we do it so that we can eventually support many client libraries, but yeah. it's mostly just RCL CPP currently. Okay. Christopher, I have a, a quick question. Maybe you have time for this for, for one minute or two. Um, yeah. in, in the context of ROS controller, the, the control working groups we were wondering, so we have our first version kind of ready and we'd like to you know instrument it and, and debug it in a way that we have a statement whether it's real-time safe or not and where it is. And, um, can I use the, the tracing tools for this kind of, um, to not only see where but also how often a function gets called. So if I want to have like, you know, 
like a classical setup. I have my robot hardware, and I have like the controller manager and all of this, and I have one one controller running. With these tracing tools, can I can I get metrics or statistics out of this? How often the update loop of the controller gets called? So can I get information of like deterministic execution model out of this? Yeah, you can do it with tracing, but there's also some other tools you can use. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's one option. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it like if you if you were to add instrumentation points, then you would have to add support for them in uh, the trace tools package, and then you would have to add support for them in all the other analysis packages. But you can you might be able to just use something like perf or any other profiling tool. Right, it's, right, right. No, I'm more differently, about... but. Right. I mean, like perf, perf. I'm, I'm kind of familiar with perf and, and all the Linux tools in general. Um, it's more like I'm thinking about CIs here, right? It would would it be great to have like, now if I have these tracing tools, even part of the ROS two um, packages. Um, then I could just have like some sort of CI or, or continuous, like a Git GitHub action or any like some some something like this, where I can see okay, I have a test which continuously gives me gives me update, uh, updates or statistics about what's happening. But yeah, that's fine. Yeah, similar to what the performance test people are doing, like generating Correct. Correct. graphs. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This, this was one of the possible use cases we had. All right, cool. Cool, I don't give it a shot. If you need help, just let me know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, is there um, anything else any of you want to talk about? Otherwise, I will go to the project board, take a look at the backlog and new issues. Okay. A couple of useful discussions there. I think we have nice stuff to try out. Um, so new issues, I'm seeing six. That's not too bad. Sure, we're looking at everything we want to see. Um, all right, QS metadata, AML is multi line. Oh, yeah, this was something that came up when I made an unrelated change, which was that these offered QS profiles are written in the metadata as a, a <laughs> encoded YAML string rather than as just more YAML, which didn't really make a lot of sense. Um, so that's a just a readability improvement. I'm going to put it to the bottom of the backlog. It's not um, important. Yeah, I went ahead and labeled that as a good first issue because oh, I actually nice. think that that might be a thing for, for community members to easily pick it up and get started with. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I think that is right. Topic stats doesn't publish the message age if QoS is key last. Is this true? That doesn't seem good. Reproduce. Oh, he's got some. I was checking out a specific packet uh, file. That's funny. Okay. I assume this is just a publisher that has keep last something. What's the... I, I suppose this this ticket is well written enough. Um, branch QS history one. I honestly didn't know that yet. Check out syntax. Hmm. Still not seeing that. Okay. Anyways, this is tryable. Um, on rolling. If this is true, though, it's existed in. Uh, Foxy as well, and we probably need to be backloaded. I'll just say. Uh, 
bugs to the top of the back bar. Hidden topics are not reported. Oh, yeah, that sounds like something we could easily um, make a regression test for. So. Yep. Backlog. Um, we had a couple of issues with the new, um, what do you call it? The regular expression and exclude stuff, um, but we got fixes in very quickly, so I think we're all right there. Uh, we've merged at least one of them. There was another one, Karsten, that you reviewed. Um, that looks okay, but there was no regression test, and I'm, I'm disinclined to merge things that fix stuff without sort of proving it. Right. Um, yeah, so what do, what do we want to do about this one? She said, uh, uh, maybe don't use external projects. And it's like, okay, that's not a useful answer. It's not our fault if the networking doesn't work sometimes on the build farm. Yeah, it turns, so I think this was just like a one-time shot, actually, because it turns out that all the like the builds are still still passing, so I think we can just close this. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm just... I don't know what we would do otherwise, though. I mean, there was a problem uh, day before yesterday on Wednesday where um, VCS imports were failing most of the time for about 12 hours. Um, mm -hmm. And it was affecting everything using Action Raw CI and everything on the OSRF build farm. And again, like, I don't know what that was, but I don't think it was something we could solve. I think it was a GitHub availability issue. Yeah. So occasionally servers don't respond and we need to either retry or just be able, willing to move on from that. Um, this was new release into rolling. I'm thinking maybe I should just do this now so that it's building. Um, I did update the build dashboard um, to the latest stuff. So now we do have rolling badges on here, um, dashing and uh, boxy are fine. I removed eloquent because that's not building anymore on the build farm. Um, but yeah, respect two is failing. And uh, I believe the latest code is just fine. RCPP utils, which was something we were depending on, um, mm -hmm. that got released. So we're OK there. I guess I should just cut a release now, especially have hit sort of the checkpoint with fixing those bugs. Um, so I'll just all your compression PRs in? Um, so the, the, the two compression PRs that fix the metadata issue are in, but uh, we can always cut another release later once after yeah. I've done this stuff. I figure we should probably get the, the rolling farm passing. Although I don't know, like how much, um, how much weight should we put on this? You know? I mean, <sighs> I think I think it's important that we keep it somewhat alive, um, but I think it's a value, like it's a valuable uh, excuse to hold it back for a week. If you say, "Hey, I need one more PR in there." Yeah, I but, mean, um, I have probably three more PRs for this mm -hmm. compression thing, um, and then you know I've got more stuff to build after that. But that gets us to the the plugin point. Um, I mean, if the current if the current version of master as it a works. as a solid version, then just release it. I mean, there's no there's no argument for not doing it, right? Yeah, yeah. We can always just make it a a patch version or or another minor yeah. version. It doesn't really matter. Um, I think we're at. I don't remember what version we are. 0.5. Um, I could take a little look at the change log before deciding whether to go 0.051 or or 0.60. Um, doesn't really matter as long as we get the build passing. But I, yeah, I don't think the API has changed. I'll have to just check. Uh, okay, uh, I'll just do, 
do this. Um, I'm going to put this in progress and do it today. And then if we have more cool changes later, I can always just do another one. Um, yeah, it's that, that that's the problem with rolling is that it, the code we put up there was fine, but now dependencies have changed. And that's the reason that it's failing. And it's not just tracking our, our latest branch. Um, so that's a slightly annoying thing about rolling is it kind of gives you more um, surface area to maintain. Uh, and it, it can get broken without any action on your part. But I guess that's just what we take on by having a rolling release. OK. Everything else is passing right now. That's good. Um, start playing messages after timestamp. Uh, I noticed that this person also put up a PR that they said is no good to merge, but oh, I didn't want the user. I wanted the PR. Um, basically, they want a start time and uh, also an end time for playback. And I think that those are reasonable features for the player, but uh, there's definitely been some more conversation going on about about you know a more full-fledged player API in general uh, for because I think there's an issue on here that's random access, uh, like a random access player, uh, which seems totally reasonable, especially with SQLite 3. We should be able to read it non-linearly without too much of a problem, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe what we need is, uh, I mean, and like they said, this is not ready to merge. It's just uh, got the feature for themselves satisfactorily. Uh, but I wonder if we should have a, a design discussion about the um, play the play API. Because I don't know yet what that should look like, but the way that we're sort of extending Rosbeg to transport Pi play um, with just more and more and more arguments is starting to feel really unwieldy. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. Um, at the same time, I would actually prefer if we talk about the reader and writer API in C++. Um, oh, yeah, I guess the um, the reader would need upgrades. You're right. And then the player could just take advantage of those. Because like one thing which which actually bothers me more than than that we have like tons of arguments for the player for the command line interface is that um, I have functionality in the command line interface, which I can use in C++. Right, because part of them, part of the logic is handled either in the, the command line package or in the transport package. Uh -huh. um, and so and ideally, it I should have, yeah, ideally I should have an API which you know lets me query messages with a start time and an end time, and then the player really just plays back whatever whatever the the C plus plus API gives. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I have time to put together a design myself, but it's a conversation I want to have. So this is kind of, I guess this is a request for anyone who wants to step up. Um, yeah, start playing after timestamp, pause, resume, random access. Um, all three of those in start, pause, interaction even are all kind of related to the, I guess that's more of just the, the playback. Um, but these three, to me, seem like yeah, reader, reader API upgrades. I don't even know if the writer needs any more advanced. Like you generally just write linearly, but um, you want to read in more complex ways. So notes, call for design on more advanced. Reader API support. Um, access at end at. Uh, yeah, those are. Is that what I called out there? 
Or where are we? A lot of tabs open now. Files. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is something to just keep in mind. I think we want to have, yeah, a more advanced reader API. I think you're right. And then the player is just something that takes advantage of that, um, exposes it in some way. And then we want to have, and if you have that exposed, yeah, then you could, on the C++ level, you could build, uh, say, GUI, you know, like an RQ plugin or an Arviz plugin that allows you to have buttons to fast forward and stuff like that. That's actually, that's actually what I had in mind here, because, you know, at the moment having C++, I should be able to easily, you know, wrap it yeah. in, in PyBind 11, have it in, in, the C, in the Python API, and then RQT and, and all these these tools can actually just use it. Yeah, I think that'd be great. So, yeah, that's I think that's not our top priority, but it's um, right, right. Yeah, should, thinking should, of thinking of how it's gonna yeah. go is top of mind. Yeah. Because okay, so Rustbag two Pi, what does this depend on right now? I'm kind of thinking about what this API should be. It doesn't depend on transport, which means that right now we couldn't expose the player through this API, should we? Or should we sort of change the transport Python well, API? That, I don't know. At that point, at that point, I don't know. Um, I, I guess we had this discussion also with um, with the re-indexing that yeah, some of the it. command line tools should actually use Rustback to Pi and not go through the transport just to get a, a link between Python and, and C++. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe transport, maybe the player needs to depend on transport and therefore the um, playback specifically needs to depend on transport and needs to be a separate Right. package, but this could be re rewritten using PyBind, which would be nice. It's not that long, but again, it's um, starting to get unwieldy. Uh, which which one's the API that I, whenever I look at the argument change, I just assume that they're doing it right. <laughs> yeah, like I don't love to see that. Yeah, yeah it's kind of it's kind of wild. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's one of those things that it's like, okay, so maybe instead we could have like compression options, um, storage options, uh, QoS options, filter, you know, because now we've got topics, regex, include, include hidden topics. Like this is a storage filter right there. So I think that this API could be re re redone in a much more um, readable and, and usable way. Uh, but maybe. What that I mean again, it, yeah, it gets filtered here at this stage, but maybe it'd be nicer to do that on the Python side to put it into these options structs, and then those could be used across both this and the Rustbag two Pi APIs. So I mean, maybe this has to live in, in transport if we don't want to pollute Rustbag two Pi with with transport. Mm -hmm. um, just something else to think about. Rustbag two transport. Python. Right with PyBind um, for viewer arguments to play back by everything that was new, start playing messages after timestamp. Um, this uh, probably ties in with, um, why isn't this not as good as looking at it on GitHub? You mentioned 484? I don't think so. Uh, well, 
computer. Given that, I think I want to put this not at the top of the backlog. I'm hoping that we can come up with something better before we piecemeal implement. Because uh, I think we've had a couple of features that, that got implemented without a, a thought of the larger architecture, and it would be nice to step back and think about that before we keep putting craft onto Rustbag 2, which is part of what I'm trying to do right now. Luckily, I have some space to, to do that, is, is take a step back and fix up some of the stuff that we put in um, on, a, on a tight schedule. Sitting in the icebox. <clears throat> it's, we've got a couple more minutes, and unless there's something else anyone wants to talk about, um, take a look at this. Not a lot. Um, open bag file by specifying YAML file. Load a bag file. It's... Um, is this? I do believe this actually came up lately again with um, with Michael as he Michael Jerome as he ported the RQT back to ROS two and. Mm -hmm. um, one of the fundamental differences was that RQT and, and ROS1 would just be able to open that back file, you know, just by like going on whatever file explorer and, and you know. Yeah, I mean, right locate now. The actual file. Um, it would be cool now that with all the splitting and like ROS2 has it in, in its own directory that like if you specify a YAML file, that's like the one file open all kind of thing. Right. Oh, so if you were to open the file explorer, you could set the filter to be .yaml. Um, exactly. And, so you, you would open the YAML file, and that would open the copy. And that specifies, yeah. yeah, that specifies relative files. So that's perfectly easy to find from there. You could even have the yeah metadata live you know outside of it. Absolutely. Or, right. Yeah. Right. So you don't have to do any heuristics or any assumptions or something like this, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't even see this as being that difficult. I think maybe we'll move this out onto the backlog. Not that you know I'm itching for new backlog items, but this doesn't seem that crazy. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to put help on it, though. <laughs> Let's see, what else? Um, Debian 9 host support. For cross compile, yeah, nope. Um, that's something I'll leave it as help wanted. Um, build Debian packages using GitHub actions. Oh, like a, a D package. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. Re enable TSAN job on system metrics collector. Um, yeah, I'm going to close this because this doesn't seem relevant to this build. Unless it was, uh, we're not even supporting this package. Um, closing as stale reopen. Yeah, I don't think that System Metrics Collector is even released into Foxy. I think it was just an eloquent. It's maybe something we should consider get rid of, getting rid of um, in favor of more fully fledged tooling like, um, you know, Telegraph or Prometheus or Collect D or that support on Action CI for building with the cross compile tool. I still think that's cool, but I'm not going to get to it anytime soon. Edit like functionality for Rustbag 2 layer. Reader, writer, and info of the interface. Um, oh, so this is you want a read, uh, uh, this 
would want a read write interface so that you could read a message and then write it back at the same time. Do you have any context on this, Kirsten? I'm thinking about it. Um, but yeah, that's, I guess that's part of the general um, reader writer API changes. Um, somewhat similar, somewhat orthogonal to this is also that um, I've got a request, I think, internally for appending ROS backs. So let's say I, you know, I, I start recording and then I not just pause it for a second or so, but I pause it like for a day and I want to resume it. Um, yeah, you, you turn off recording and then you want exactly. to start recording Probably. into the same bag again or correct or a new file within a new split file within the same bag. Right. I guess either right. way. Um, yeah. Some way that you could solve that would be, um, oh, I think and I, I saw a feature request for this at some point too, was um, yeah. uh, 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 recombining bags that were split in the first place. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, a lot of this meta tooling, which maybe if you, um, yeah, if you wanted to combine bags or if you wanted to append to bags, I think, yeah, you could specify a way for the writer to open an existing file and then just start writing new messages to it. I, I guess yeah, I don't I see any technical limitations to stop us from yeah, that. Yeah, but I also still haven't really made up my mind whether that's actually a valid use case or not. Um, because combining, if, if you think about it, the, the current reader writer API and the metadata.yaml file is actually your appending uh, or like your, your combining logic, if you want, right? I mean, like, why would you combine the file if the YAML file just does it for you? I mean, yeah, that makes sense. It's not really a benefit, I guess. But I also I see the problem with that if you. If it's non-continuous and you do playback, you're going to have time jumps, uh, and Ross mm -hmm. time might complain about that. Yeah, I don't know. That's assuming we handle the clock topic, which I have on my plate for Galactic, so it must happen in the next couple of months. Yeah, I, I should do that too. Um, so once you start with it, let me know, um, because I think I have a few ideas. Also, okay. when it comes to Ross control and Gazebo integration and all that stuff. Um, okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah I, I haven't thought very much about the implementation yet. I just um, mm. uh, took it onto my plate on the galactic roadmap. So, um, yeah, help always helpful. Um, okay, I don't know if we need to look through everything here. Just good to like take a, take a peek. Um, compression options for specific formats. I think that this would be fantastic also. <laughs> That's uh, uh, something that I would really like is if we had, say you could plug in like H.264 for uh, the image streams and do video encoding on that and then a standard uh, compression on everything else like uh, ZSTD or, or whatever. But that's a topic for another time. Okay. <laughs> Thanks everyone for coming today. I think we had some useful discussions. We've got some work to go do. And um, I don't think we have a, based on that conversation, I don't think we have a breakout session to do next week. Um, I had, yeah, that's fine. I feel like that evaluation happened quickly. Um, yeah, we got a couple of ideas here, but until we have a uh, strong need to have them. These are just potential future topics. I know there was an, um, like Aaron Lysdell wanted to have a conversation about RQ, and I can't remember who else was on the line that also wanted to talk about that, but I'll wait until someone speaks up about it before we actually schedule a breakout meeting. Um, so thanks for coming today, and I'll see you in two weeks then is the plan. Sounds good. Have a good one. Bye. 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 B